Good evening and welcome to Mothers and Daughters Candid Conversations. I am so honored to be with you again tonight. Um, we have a, just a great guest. And I want to, <laughs> I want to first, um, I want to say to all of the great sheroes and uh, women during this month uh, where we are honoring women um, for so many reasons and so deserving. And if there's so, a woman in your life that you have not celebrated, you've not told her that you love her today, if you've not acknowledged her accomplishments, do so. And for those that, um, if you can't find a reason to celebrate them, then simply tell them that you love them. And so we're gonna get right into our show tonight. Darlene, welcome to Mothers and Daughters Candid Conversations. Again, I am Gloria Walton and I am your host tonight. Uh, my co-host will not be with us again tonight. And so I just wanna welcome you, Darlene. Thank you so much. <laughs> I'm honored to be here. I, I want to uh, read your, your bio. I want to get that so they'll know. Uh, I won't read it in its entirety, but I, I want our audience to know exactly who we have in our midst tonight as you share um, with us. Now, Darlene Higgs Hollins, known as the Confidence and Personal Resuscitation Life Coach, the CPR, yes, is a native of the Bahamas. And we, currently she's residing in uh, Atlanta, Georgia. She's an Amazon best-selling author of six books that I must get. Divorced, Suddenly Single, Mother's Devotional, Divorced, Suddenly Single, In Paradise, <laughs> Women's Experience During Hurricane Dorian, and the anthology Unmuted, in which we will definitely um, talk about. She's a certified master uh, life and business coach and the founder of Rebranding My Life Movement. Yes, it's a movement for women and an ordained minister. She's passionate about being a midwife for women birthing their dreams. As a CEO of DH Book Consulting and Publishing, She's also a publisher for women. Most of her clients call her their book midwife. I like that. She uses all of her professional qualifications and experiences as well as her personal experience of overcoming various traumatic life experiences to successfully help them birth their book baby. Um, thank you, Darlene. She has been featured in several media outlets, including Courageous Women Magazine, BahamasLocal.com, Native Stew, and the Bahamas Weekly, and the list goes on. <laughs> and so, I mean, it's, this is, it really is an extensive uh, uh, bio, but I just wanna have this conversation with you. So how did you get to the USA? <laughs> Well, well, actually, I have family that lives here. So half of my siblings are back home in the Bahamas still, and half of us are here. So I came here um, in the late 80s at first just to um, help my brother and his wife out. They were moving, and, and I liked it. And I was also getting ready to go to college. And so I ended up coming back to Georgia on a tennis scholarship. I'm a graduate of the Ford Valley State University. <laughs> I'm a proud um, Wildcat. <laughs> so it's one of the HBCUs. Now you said a tennis scholarship. Yes. I played okay. number one. On, um, I played tennis from like age 10, I think. Yeah. So I, I came and I played number one on my tennis team. Is that why you honored Serena? Yes. <laughs> we have so much in common. So I understood some of her challenges. Not the money part. I'm not there yet, but... <laughs> But everything else, I, I understood um, the path that she was taking and it really made us feel um, good that we had someone at the top and she stayed at the top. I mean, Venus did some things too, but I identify more with Serena. Okay, okay. Now, 
Um, so I see that you are a best-selling author as well as um, a business coach. Tell us about your business. Oh, wow. So I have several businesses, actually. It's amazing how God has brought me from what I thought I would be doing at this point in my life or just after college to where I am now. So I have a degree, um, bachelor's in biology and one in chemistry. So I've done um, research and development and that kind of stuff. And then I ended up uh, working in higher education. And so I worked at uh, a university as their conference um, conference center director and then over their campus and one of their campuses. And I'm like, why am I going through all of this? I'm not even in science. So... <laughs> But it was all um, to bring me to where I'm at now and, and going through my, um, my divorce, it was very, very tough. A very tough divorce and um, a very challenging um, custody um, battle. And I started my women's ministry first. I didn't intend, I always had done other little things here and there, but I never intended to be working for myself um, other than me having one, having wanted to become a physician after college, and I didn't even think about coaching at all. But based on all my experiences, and one day I started doing something in mental health after I received my master's degree in public health, and then I said oh, I'll do something with mental health. I really want to help women who are dealing with all these. Um, domestic violence issues and, and just marriage, all that kind of stuff. So I want to do marriage and family therapy. And then I decided I didn't, that's not what I want to do. I didn't want to deal with that part of it. I wanted to help women when they were um, ready to really work towards their future. And that's how I ended up in, in life coaching. And as I was doing it, I realized, and, and I talk a little bit about it in, in the unmuted book, I realized that my mother actually all of my sisters, they were in business for themselves. And so I, I grew up in that. And there was a part of me to teach women. I'd been doing it all along, teaching women how to start businesses, how to create um, different products and services so that they can have multiple streams of income. And so mm -hmm. that's where I ended up. So now I have <laughs> rebranding my life coaching and I'm also a coach trainer. I used to be a teacher too. So, um, and I decided like, I needed to, uh, there was a need for not just theory, but implementation. And so I started Rebranding My Life International Coaching Academy last year. So we're um, a little bit over a year old. And then I also, um, out of all of this, I started the publishing. And I really started doing the publishing more than the coaching. I was still trying to pull back on it, but God wasn't having that. And so this year, um, last year, everything came full circle for me. I always wanted to go into the cause. I wanted to go into the cosmetic industry. I said, if I'm not a physician, if I'm not a pediatrician. I just want to go and do some cosmetic chemistry. Well, they were not in Georgia. They were all in the coal areas, like way up north in the coal. And I didn't want to go there. <laughs> and so, no. I, <laughs> so I just left that alone. But I always wanted to do it. So last year I started um, Maribel Van Ay, um Beauty, which is named after my three, my, my three sisters who passed away. Okay. And, um, so I have now have a skincare uh, business and it brought it everything full circle for me because I, um, I always, I talk to the women, I talk about when you rebrand your life, it's your mind, your body, your spirit, and the money. You got to bring all of that together. So that part for me brought a full circle um, to help women really if they've worked on the outside and now working on the out, um, work on the inside and the beauty this part will help them to work on the outside too so and this is what I love to do so okay that's great so now we've gone from um the Bahamas to the United States to college um a divorce when did you pivot to understand that one you're an ordained minister so where does your faith um fit into this grand scheme of, of your, your business and your life and exactly where you're at now? Well, I grew up in church. My dad was a pastor, actually. <laughs> so I'm a PK for real, for real. <laughs> and, so, and so that was ingrained in me from I was born. And that's all I, that's all I knew. And uh, I went to a Christian high school 
back home in the Bahamas. And so for me, that's, that's all I knew. And, and I stood on that and that's what really helped me to, to pivot. Like that was, especially when I lost custody of my children, not just leaving my marriage, but um, after, um, you know, dealing with the domestic violence for so long, but when I lost, when, when my kids were not allowed to come with me, when I moved and, and even fighting for them from the beginning, it was my fate that kept me. It was my fate that kept me. I would have died otherwise. Cause when I wanted to give up and when I didn't feel like God even loved me. And I remember saying that the day that judge just said, Oh, just let them stay. It wasn't even, and it was so weird. And everybody, I even had my, cause I had my attorney. He said, I've never, ever seen this before. He said, never. I've seen so many women come in here. And usually when they're fighting, it's women who they're saying they, they cleaned up to come here. They try to clean their image up, but you didn't have to do none of that. You're really professional. You're really who you say you are. He said, I've never seen anything like this, but I knew it was to test my faith. And I knew it was for what I do now to help women and to help me be more I always help women, always had a passion for women, but it made me even more passionate to help women out of what people don't even see them at all, even seeing beyond their masks. So I could see women now and they're saying certain things, but I can feel them. I don't know if it's because I've been through it, but I, I can tell when you're smiling, I can see beyond that smile. Oh, that's awesome. I think that's called discernment. <laughs> yes, yes. So yes. Um, this is Mothers and Daughters Candid Conversation. Thanks to my daughter. Um, and so I asked prior, is there anything that you would not want me to ask? And um, I want to, I did read your um, chapter in the anthology, Unmuted. And so um, before you go too far, I, I'd like for you um, to talk about your mother and daughter relationship. Ooh, yes. So really, this is my first time I, I kind of um, talked about it a little bit and I didn't even really say a lot about the book. My family, they haven't read it yet. Oh. Um, <laughs> but it took me some years to come full circle and really deal, it, deal with my mom. So my mom and I, she's always been very supportive, very supportive. Um, all my life with whatever I wanted to do, whatever I wanted to pursue. I'm the baby of 12. And um, I was the first one to come to call. Well, actually, I think maybe one sibling um, after I did, but I'm the first, you know, I was the first one to come to college and she supported me like almost everything. So it shocked. There were things that happened with my siblings and even with another sister, but I didn't expect it to happen to me. Um, so when I got married, well, I really before then I'd seen things, but especially when I got married, so I'll tell you about that part. When I got, when I got married, it was just like really weird. Like it was like my, my, my ex-husband was her child and I was this woman who he got married to. And that really, I couldn't understand it, but you know, I dealt with it, but it got really, really um, bad and out of hand when I was going through my divorce. It was really bad. Some things I did not even put in the book. <laughs> um, but now are you saying things got bad with your with the relationship between you and your me mother? and my mother? Okay. Yes. So my mother, my first custody hearing, my first divorce hearing, my mother, I knew she was there. And I knew she was gonna come. I knew she was gonna show up. My siblings didn't think she was, but when I got to the courtroom, my mother was sitting with my ex-husband and his family. This was my first time ever in my life in court. And I was already terrified. She had already done some things to me. And so I remember calling my sister. There were like six of my friends with me. And so imagine this behaving girl. I don't, I didn't tell my sister who was here because my sister did not need to be there. It would not have been a good for her to be there. She would have gotten in trouble that day. And so I didn't even tell her. So I ended up being there without family. Um, and that was hard. That was really, really, really hard. Mm -hmm. And 
that day, it cut off like everything but me and my mom. It was like so bad. She'd written a really nasty affidavit. It, I mean, some of the things that my daughter read it, my oldest read it, and she could not believe the things that my mother said about me. And it took the judge saying, she's not that kind of woman. I, she had she did not have time for men the way she said. She did not have time for all of that. She finished graduate school within a year, grad school. He said no. And she had the kids, no. And so that time, um, because it was so close to school, and I hadn't moved, they stayed with me. When I moved, it was like, it had gotten really, really bad. Like, so she would come and be with him and, and his family. And it was like really, really bad. It, it really put my whole family in a spin. And so we didn't talk for years, like really didn't talk for years. And um, one time my brother tricked me. She was supposed to come to stay with him and he went out of town. And she ended up, I don't know why I said, yes, let her stay with me. But I, even then I was trying to forgive her being in my house no one could even believe I allowed her to come in my house that's how bad it was and she said um I said you know I really forgive you and she went off on me and I said that's it I'm done I mean there was a whole lot of other stuff that happened like I said that I hadn't really um talked about because um everybody won't understand that part of it but it was a whole lot that went on to the point where um I was suicidal it, it hurt my children it hurt me and it took me a long time before I said, okay, I can even talk to her. Like I'll see in the room if I go to my, bro my brother's house when she came and visited and I'd speak because that's who I am. I mean, we talk to um, respect our elders and so I would speak, but that would be it. We would not have conversation. And I think it was within the last several years and I started, I always saw parts of her in me and we would always talk about that because she's very independent she was the one that had business I mean she and my dad did stuff together but we really learned a lot from my from my mother not just us, my sisters but my brothers too and so I as I as I evolved with business and the tenacity my tenacity and even my faith and not allowing people to tell me no and all those things and there were other things too that I was like oh I'm like her uh, but, and that's why I said the good, the bad, and the ugly, because I had to come to that point to see that, you know, there is some good in there that I learned from her. That's and it true. was, and it wasn't until um, about a year, two, two Christmases ago, when she, she got sick, and she's in the 80s, and had all, you know, mine was right, everything. And all of a sudden she just started going downhill. She called, she kept asking for me and I'm shocked, like she's asking for me. And so they finally, I finally called and put her on, they, she came on the phone and she said, I remember her saying, we, you know, talking to me, talking to me and I'm trying to hold myself together. And she said, we all just need to get along. And I'm like, what? Why couldn't she have said this years ago? And my kids heard, and I just sat there and cried. And I'm like, I, I basically felt like I didn't have my mother. I have another mother who, thank God, she was there for me. But I felt like I'd lost my mother all those years. There were times when I was going through, especially fighting for my kids, that I needed my mother. But it was my mother that was the catalyst for that happening. Because if my mother hadn't gone in that courtroom, I wouldn't have lost custody of my kids. It wouldn't have been that fight. It wouldn't have given him any, any fire or anything any weapon to use against me, but because she was there, some people believed her. And, but it, it, it's only been like within the past year and a half, that two years that I really said, okay, I need to do this. And, and now as she, as she started um, getting, you know, I'm getting sicker and um, now she's in a nursing home. And there are times they would, the lady would tell me she's asking for you. So it, it shocks me that she's asking for me. And when I went there, um, I know the, the first time she went in, they kept saying, she's asking for you. They told her that I was coming home and I went to, I went there and I was like, she's like, I just could not believe she was asking for me. And they said, she keeps asking for you. And then she said she was getting ready to go to the airport because you were coming in. And I was like, really? 
And so I went and I talked to her. And I think that was the last time she really, really knew it was me. Other than now during COVID, um, they would they would let us Zoom. The lady who's a caretaker would Zoom. And or sometimes she would say, she's been asking for you. So for me, that's big. Because we, we were not, when I say not talking at all, years went by. No calls for nothing. Or if I even, I knew if I tried to call, she would either not answer the phone or she would hang up on me. It was just that bad. So do I hear you saying that you lost custody, that your mother contributed to you losing custody of your children? And that is really what put your mother-daughter relationship in jeopardy. Yes. Okay. And during this time, you were um, also going through a divorce, coming out of a domestic violent uh, marriage. So did she support you during that time? It was, um, it was a very interesting dynamic because like I said when she came she was really really close to my my ex-husband and she saw things happen she was actually there when things happened like twice and that's what hurt me even more like you've seen what I've been through like you've been there she was the one who was would would tell the family you know I'm afraid that he's gonna kill her I'm afraid that I'm gonna get a call one day but my daughter is dead and So that I was like, I can't understand, like, you know that, how can you still support that? But I understand now that it was all about control because some things were said. And so for me, that was really, really tough. And and I lost, when I said lost custody of my kids, it was on, it was joint on paper, but they could not be with me. They could not be with me. And, And that was like a seven year battle trying to get my kids back. Part of the time they were with me, but once I moved um, to be near my family, because I didn't have a support system in where I was in Georgia, because I wasn't always here in Atlanta, I was in the middle Georgia area, and I didn't have a support system, and I needed that, and so I, I and plus I needed a better job, I said, I'm going to go back into my field, I want to go back into science, and so I started doing, um, went back and, and did, was doing cl- um, clinical research, and so, and it was weird, I'd have to just know you can't take them, and It was that. So those were some hard years. It was like two, two, two years without my children. I would only see them on the weekends and maybe a few weeks during the summer. Um, And then their time for Christmas. And and that was it, whether they came Christmas or um, Thanksgiving. And that was hard. And, And it was hard for me to not hate my mother. It was very hard. And, um, I, this didn't only happen to me. She had done it to one of my sisters before. So my ex knew she would support him with doing that because she had done it before. Now, what type of relationship did your mother have with her mother? Um, Well, my my grandmother passed away when I was in college, but it was not good. Um, I remember, um, you know, I hear stories and then I, I, I can recall my grandmother actually um, supporting me <laughs> when my mother did things to me because my mom was like, yeah. So when she did things, my, my, my grandmother would support me. And, you know, being the baby of the family, I would just hear. So it wasn't the best relationship. No, when it you never was. That your mother did things to you. Was she abusive? Yes. And that's what she knew. I mean, that's basically what she knew. It was like in my in my island, everybody knew not to mess with Miss Drusilla. <laughs> I don't know anybody from the Bahamas, even from Inagua, even watching this, they know. And even even like up into after I finished high school, like it was the same thing. So yeah, but and, and I thought about all that too. Like, how was her relationship with her mom? Because it was predominantly her daughters that she did not have a good relationship with. It was predominantly the girls. So you go to college on a tennis scholarship. Um, did she celebrate those times? Was she um, a, a, a mom that was in tune to your career, your desires? Your She was really supportive. Um, I mean, my mother didn't know about the college pathway. And like I said, I was the first one in my family to go. 
but she supported that whatever, whenever we wanted to do something, some of them say they don't, that only because I'm the baby she did, but she, she always said I would support anything any of y'all wanted to do. She was big on us getting our education. And so because I wanted to come to college, she surely supported it. And she sacrificed for me to come to college. And that's what I didn't understand. She sacrificed. I remember her um, going home one summer and we hung the clothes on the line and I saw her clothes. And I said, mommy, why your clothes? And, and she said, because, you know, I just made sure that you had what you need. And so I, I watched her sacrifice for me when I was in college, when I was in high school, because I didn't go to high school in my island. I went to high school in Nassau on a, on a scholarship. So I was away from them for um, a long time. I went home during, you know, on, on holidays. So she sacrificed even then for me to go to, to high school in Nassau. So she, so I, I didn't understand that dynamic, even though I had seen her do it to my sister. I just didn't understand. And we would think like, maybe it's because of her relationship with that sister. Cause that's just the, she left when she was like, as soon as she got out of high school, she was gone. She okay. left. So I, I didn't understand that. So now, um, so you're married um, in a domestic violent relationship. You make the decision to, uh, to get out. Your relationship with your children, with your daughter, I understand that they were out of your physical custody for two years. What's your mother daughter relationship like? My my oldest, she's really a daddy's girl. And so um, during all that, it was really tough for her. And I tell anybody, when you've been separated from your children, they're not the same when they come back to you. And then that's honestly been a rocky road because um and now that she's um uh, older she's in her 20 early 20s we talk more and she understands more why i did some things the way i did it and i told her that if i didn't i would have i would have died i would have given up i had somebody tell me just just leave just go back home just just go back home to the bahamas and just leave but i could not just leave my children i mean i've been here most of my adult life anyway and so it's been a rocky road in some, in some instances, because we had to get to know each other again. Uh, my youngest daughter was uh, like five, five or six when that happened. And so that did a real, a whole lot of emotional and mental damage to my children, all three of them, including my son. And so it's been, it's been tough. And I always tell people when you see children separated, especially from their mom, you'll come together and everybody think everything is fine because they know your personality, know your daughters, and they don't understand the tug of war. And so it's been a tug of war where she's, you know, they spent so long trying to please them and then trying to please me, don't, not wanting anybody to be mad with them going through all those years. And, um, but, but it's, it's a whole lot better now. Uh, we will talk now. And then uh, I th culturally, there some there was some things different too, and so it it sometimes it's been a rocky road. But we we have conversation because I don't want to do that to my kids. Talk about the cultural difference. What's what's different? Um, <laughs> so like even even now, I know for a long for a long time, like they weren't in those years with me. So when we talk. <laughs> Sometimes when we talk fast or we say certain things, they they would say, mommy, it sounds like you're fussing. Like I'm I'm like, that's just my accent. That's just the way I talk. And so um, or sometimes when they think we're upset, we're not. Um, and then there might have been some instances too where things that we just we don't do, um, they would do here or her friends would do it. I'm like, no, we do not do that. That's you know, that's not allowed. But as she's gotten older, like one day she said, mommy, I really appreciate the things that you taught me because, you know, now I understand. Um, so let's pivot to uh, rebranding your life. You've gone through a lot. And I hear um, even now how um, emotional 
you um, become just just discussing the relationship with your mother and um, I'm sure that was a, a devastating time. Divorce, I'm divorced. I know how, um, how much of an emotional toll that can take on you when you thought you'd be married for the rest of your life. Um, I understand that. Um, I understand uh, you said something earlier and, and I try to make mention of a book that I read and it said, um, the title of the book is, I'm my mother's daughter. I'm my mother's friend. I am my mother. And the stages that you share that you went through with your mother reminds me of that. And um, as a daughter, and as um, I, I have one biological daughter as well, and there's so many things that I find myself doing as my mom, those things that I said that I would never do, but then you find yourself doing those things. Um, and so in parenting, sometimes you want to, you think, whether it's consciously or unconsciously, you think that you are saving your child, you are saving your daughter from the heartaches and the pains. And But what I've come to learn is that you have to let them get that experience themselves. I, I'm still, you know, I'm still learning how to like, uh, my daughter, my daughter is fully grown, but I'm still learning how to release myself from her and her life, you know, because you, you care and you love your child and you don't want them to, um, to go through the thing. If you can save them from, from particularly that emotional pain, then that's yes. what you, you know, you want to do. Um, you know, your, your resume, now I, I don't, this is mothers and daughters candid conversation. This is not a therapeutic session. This is, we don't have a script. This is just a conversation. Um, but my background professionally, I, I, I worked for the child protection services here in my state for so long. That's where I retired. And some things that you're saying is one, um, bringing, I'm having like flashbacks, okay? But then when I hear your professional background, I mean, you're a grad student, you are, I'm intrigued by the mere fact that you went to college on a, a, um, a tennis scholarship, but <laughs> you have, you're a scientist, you know, I love science. And so relationships, mother and daughter relationships, there's really no boundaries. Um, there's, there's no um, exclusion from, the, from, the, from having troubled relationships. There's no exclusion. There's no such thing as a perfect mother and daughter relationship. Well, we know that there's no such thing as a perfect relationship. Right. Whether it's mother and daughter, mother and son, um, husband and wife, we know that. And so um, when I think about um, the, the separation, as you shared, you know, the time that you were separated from your children, that had to have been a most difficult time. Um, now, were your children present during um, this, the, the abuse, the domestic um, abuse? Okay. And so how, how, do you, how do you explain to your daughter, you know, how not to repeat that cycle? Oh, I'll tell you. So I had a friend at the time who was a mental health counselor. And she said, Darlene, let me tell you the mistake that a lot of people make as they're going through this. Um, she had recently um, gotten a divorce too. And we happened to had just moved next to each, next door to each other. And she said, they tell you don't say anything. You need to tell your daughter. You need to have a talk with her. You need to be honest with her. And was the oldest one because you know, the baby wouldn't understand at the time. My oldest was, uh, I think, 14, 13 or 14. She was 14. And she said, you need to tell her the truth. You need to have the hard conversation with her because normally when the woman is not there, it turns on that daughter, even though as close as they are and knowing the whole history behind him and that it happened with him, he grew up in that um 
we had those conversations. They were hard conversations, but I would tell her. And that's how they actually, because they were playing mind games with my children. And so my my when she told me that, that's how I got my children back, by being honest with them. To tell them when y'all ask questions about me specifically, say, ask mommy if it makes you uncomfortable. So I would have to tell them, like, I had to be honest with her. And even now we have that conversation about, you know, with, with, with men and, and, and dating and, and, you know, God protecting her, but just having that candid conversation and seeing some things and she, so she understands. So I didn't, I did not sugarcoat anything for my children, uh, but putting it in the right context to let them know that uh, it's not, it's not to bash, but it's for you to be aware and for you to make choices for yourself, the right choices. So you have two daughters. Yes. And so do you see you? Oh, yes. I see me actually in my son too. Um, it's funny. I just, in fact, I just told their dad, I said, I see a lot of you, but then he was like, they like you. So yes, I do see that. Uh, uh, the oldest, she's not, she's not like me when it comes to like business. She's not like, you know, she's a scientist too. She just got her degree last year. I'm um, amidst COVID. <laughs> and, um, but when it comes to tenacity, the way she thinks, um, not giving up, uh, just being like that silent people think because you're silent, they got to roll over you. She's like me, like, no. So yes, I do. I do see a lot of that. And she, she we've even been talking about it. She said, it's some things that you said to me or that I watch you do that now I know what I know what I do it. And that's how I make, you know, the right choices. Or if it's a hard place, how do I get out of this? So, yeah. I, I want to switch the comp. Thank you so much uh, for sharing um, that, that, as I said, you know, I, I, I could feel the emotions rising up as you discussed you know, that journey um, with your children and the domestic violence and thank you. Um, but I, I wanna take a leap forward to talk about this rebranding. That is a, um, and before I do that, I do want to um, recognize our Facebook. Um, we have quite a few people on Facebook. Hey, Facebook folks. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for so, joining us. Yes, thank you for joining us. Uh, thank you for watching us, and I, um, I, I just want to—I want to—I want to make mention of a few names so that they know that, and, and I appreciate um, them sharing with us. We have Denise Myers from South Carolina. Um, we have Linda Wilson, my friend. Oh my God, we have my former supervisors, um, Barbara Henry and Gabe Luca. Oh my Gabe, my Gabe Lupo. Um, some of our church family members, Sandra Bryan, and um, one of our um, freeholders, uh, Junior Maldonado. Thank you so much for watching. Um, Dara Cox and um, my, my, my uh, friend, Cynthia Hughes, and my wonderful niece, Sheree and, and Mabel. Um, and thank you all for, for joining us tonight. Um, if there's any questions or comments, if you put it in the chat, I will definitely ask her the questions. Um, on Zoom with us, we have uh, Carolyn Stokes and uh, Mary Jackson and uh, Sharon Thomas. If there's any questions, you can put it in the chat um, or you can um, hold it and give it to me later because we're gonna be, well, there's, there will be plenty um, uh, conversations with Darlene, but okay. for the sake of time, um, women, this is Women's Month. Uh, every day is Women's Day to me, <laughs> you know, but, and, and as I said earlier, and we should celebrate the women in our lives. Yes. You know? And there's so many women, Darlene, that sit silent in abuse, you know, and their daughters watch that. Um, I am, um, I, my, my mother was abused. Uh, I have not told that story, but it's coming in my upcoming um, uh, 
memoir uh, about some very, as you said, you know, you had not shared it with your family. And um, I'm sure they will be surprised when they read your book. But it's time for us to break the silence for the sake of our daughters, our sons as well. But since this is mothers and daughters, <laughs> the conversation for the sake of our daughters, because they watch us endure. They watch us, you know, um, operate in silence. And if there's anything that I would want to do away with, and that is the cycle of abuse, physical, emotional um, abuse, that, um, that, that those cycles be broken, you know, um, because it's, it's so devastating to a family. And here you are with these, I mean, your credentials are amazing, but the mere conversation about the abuse and about, you know, that mother-daughter relationship, it, it brings you to tears. And so I'm so interested and in, I'd like for you to share what is rebranding? How, how do the women that's watching, and, and you're no longer doing the one-on-one -on -one coaching, although I followed, I, I was on your site recently, and some of the women, um, they said, oh, Coach Darlene, and they began to talk um, about their life, and they began to um, speak, because this is the year of that voice. We must speak out. And so, how, what, what would be your instructions? One, there's a person on here that's very dear to me, a Lila. What I call her Lily. But what would be your your instruction? How do we rebrand ourselves? It first starts with making a decision for yourself to live and not just exist. I made up my mind that I would live and not just exist. Live and not just exist. Okay. And then what? I wanted to live a quality life. And from where I was, um, people knowing me in the community, in my church, we were leaders. I didn't care about that anymore. I left because of my children too. Um, before I left, I had two, I had two mini strokes. And a lot of people don't know this. I had two TIAs and I had to, I just had to make the decision that I'm going to live. And I didn't want my children to grow up like that. I, I, didn't, I didn't want them to grow up the same way their father had because I found out some things after. And so some things that we're seeing they, they, they grew up that way. And I did not want that cycle to continue. Um, so I, that's what I did. I said, I, I have to live and not just exist. I don't care how scared I am. I gotta, I gotta do this. The day that I signed um, my lease, cause I was trying to buy a house. Good thing I didn't. <laughs> but the day I signed my lease, I was so scared. And I remember the leasing agent, he said, I'm going to give you a minute. And he walked out of the room because I had told him why. And he walked out of the room and he came back and he said, are you ready? Mm. Man, I hadn't even thought of this. And I signed at least to, to move into that house in another town, not far away, but I did it for my children and for me to live. Or I would have been dead, not just spiritually dead, I, between getting sick or he would have done something to me. And and it's those ones, and, and I'm saying this because some ladies might hear this, it's the ones that nobody believe doing it to you. Everybody think that you are a liar. Everybody think that you're the one. Everybody think that you're aggressive. When you're the one being abused, um, all kind of stuff happening behind closed doors and you're living with it because you believe no one is going to believe you. I will tell you, somebody will believe you. I just made up my mind. And when I say rebrand, I said, how did I go? from being, I was my island's, I was my island's beauty queen <laughs> and to, and the ten, and playing tennis and doing all this stuff and all these things I planned to this. I mean, I had, I look different. I put on so much weight and just like let myself go. It was like, people said I didn't who knew me then, but I knew I did to the point where people will see me from back then. And I've literally had people who did not recognize me. 
And that's, so that rebrand will be on the inside of you as well as on the outside of you. And so this is Darlene, not even 2.0, I'm at 3.0 now. So just, you know, just evolving and really looking at who you want to be, really grasping that and not letting anybody tell you anymore that you cannot be that person. Whatever your dream is, whatever your plans were for your life, whatever trajectory of your life you were on before you even got into that, whether, cause some of them may not be married to the person. They may just have been in a long relationship with the person and they're afraid to get out. See yourself where you want to be and see yourself as God sees you. And that's what a rebrand is like total mind, body, spirit. And the one thing that he teased me about was where money was concerned. Cause some of us are trapped because that where that is concerned because we're, we're married, but we're single in certain instances, in certain places in our, in our lives. And God had to rebrand that for me too. Or oh, being teased that I hope you, I hope you um, satisfied now. I hope you got money now, or, you know, things like that. But I have peace. I would always say, but I have peace. Yes. And to grow back from that. And I think some of us were afraid that we're going to lose all the stuff. I just left almost everything and started over. You can get material stuff back, but you cannot get your life back. Yeah. You cannot get your life back. And there is no substitute for peace. None. No. Um, thank you for sharing that. I, I know that there are more steps, but because we are on Zoom. <laughs> and I'm, I'm so grateful for this virtual um, space. You know, um, it's, it's amazing that um, women as yourself and so many more, had it not been for the pandemic, we, we would have not met. There's no. the, we would have to come to Georgia, <laughs> you know, or read about you in, in magazines. So I am grateful, um, not for the pandemic, but I'm grateful for some of the positive things that have come out of the pandemic. Um, you have, um, you, you talked about this, this control of money. And sometimes when you, uh, some women or others on the outside don't understand how controlling the finances is a form of domestic violence, you know? Um, and so I've, I've heard the story too long that I can't go, I can't afford to leave, but you really can't afford not to leave. You know, um, my mother, her stay was, I grew up without my father and I do not want my children to grow up without their father. That is not reason enough to stay in a no, violent not. Um, situation. Not. Too many women are losing their lives daily and our daughters are walking in you know, those footprints. And I think that the, 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 the other um, scenario to that is not being able to identify healthy relationships because I've not seen it. And they adjust, they make the adjustment to remain. And so that is something that I, um, I, I, I just wish that, you know, I don't have a magic wand, but I have seen enough child abuse and, and enough um, domestic violence uh, situations to understand that something must be done. And so rebranding the, 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 the thought that I can rebrand myself is so powerful, you know? So thank you for, um, I'm going to say thank you for all of the women that you have helped because I've, I've heard some of them. And I, and I, and I pray that those that are listening um, tonight will glean something and be encouraged. Now, I do have something in the chat from, um, from Carol, but I'm gonna ask her to come on and say, um, she's saying, yes, adjustment to rebuild. But I'm, I'm gonna ask her to uh, unmute. And um, if she is comfortable with uh, coming off camera, coming on camera, that she may be able to share her thought.
Good evening. Hi. Hi. So nice to um to meet you. Um and thank you. Thank you, Gloria. Um, I'm at work, so please excuse me. I'm trying to um get in a little quiet place and put the light on. Um, but I was sharing how um you you shared so much. That was so great. Um I was just sharing how I had to learn how to, I think, love myself all over again, had to learn how to um, believe in myself, to be able to take care of myself, my independence, um, to um, really um, make that connection again where my true identity came from. Because um, in 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 the separ in the separation or in the violence in the domestic with with, with my um, to be ex husband soon, um, I I lost myself somewhere that um, even when I talk about it now I forgave but the 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 the, the growth and the emotion is still being healed. And so that was the most devastating thing for me was to um, not believe in myself. I was scared to dream. Um, I was very afraid to come home. I was thinking about um, all of the people that was going to say, um, you, you have nothing. Uh, uh, you left. Why did you leave? Just thinking of everything. But um go home. Don't think about that stuff. It took a while to get there. Um, and I, I, and, and now, and in the midst of thinking of all that, I thought about my daughter, my goodness, I don't want this for my daughter. And I try to share with my daughter, even now, um, the importance of not settling in anything that, that, that isn't, promising that isn't real that isn't productive that 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 you have to um compromise on i, I share that now because i did th i did that um even sometime before i even got married so it, it became a it became a behavior and a pattern and so i getting married i was like oh this this is not going to happen to me you know and it did so I'm beginning now to feel um, better. I, I, I have my own money. Um, I, I have money to do whatever I want to do, to give whatever I want to give. Um, now I'm, I'm, I'm getting back the, because um, I never got my degrees. Um, I, I, I was in nursing school right out of high school. I was in medical assistant school. I was in early childhood education. I never finished my degrees, but um, the Lord had always made ways and doors for me open. And now I'm even thinking about, you know what? I think soon I'm going to be 60 and I might just go back and do something else in school because I've helped a lot of people. I'm not the brightest one in my family, but I could get through. And so when I was listening to you, it was encouraging me and, um, there were some business I've had, had my own child care home, you know, and I was just sitting down. Hope I'm not taking too much time. I was just sitting down recently because uh, God put a book inside of me, daughters prevail. And I've been working on that. And, and I said, you know what? It's just so much you need to get done and complete, you know, and, and you went through domestic violence, separation of your children. I went through domestic violence and cancer. So it's like, it's always something else there, but it don't mean stop. And so I've been encouraging myself to, to launch because um, um, to launch because I um, it, it's a lot inside of me that the earth is waiting for, and and I know I need to get it out. So I I, I know I don't want to keep talking long, 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 but um, just listening to your story has really encouraged me to not give up on my dreams, to keep hope, to um. And I'm the only one can make it happen. Yes. I mean, of course, we know that God is there, but he put it in me and I have to make it happen. So yes. um, just thank, 
thank you. You're so beautiful. And thank you. I just I just wish you the best and the best thank and you. best and best. And I hope that we can share again. So thank you for yes, um please connect. Please connect. Yes. I'm so proud yes. of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Someone uh, just made a comment um that I, I like and, and they said uh, it's about knowing your worth. You have to and you know, relationships can drain you to the point that you forget your worth. You forget that you are worthy of being loved and, and even self-care. And those are the things that, you know, I just want our daughters to understand. And we have to um, uh, uh, instill in our daughters, you are worth it. And, and um, I, I don't wanna go, go delve too much into because sometimes mothers get too much into their daughter's relationships, but, I want to make sure that for as, as, as um, many times as I can say it and encourage women and daughters alike, as this person just said, know your self-worth, you know, and, and be, women is, can be such caretakers that we forget to take care of ourselves. Yes. And that is also something that we pass on. And so we have to learn how to love ourselves and take care of ourselves. And put on your own oxygen mask first. Put on, put your, on your own. Absolutely, absolutely. And we have to learn that. I have a lot of social workers on 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 the um on the line tonight, and I know personally that and and uh, well, <laughs> probably so is I mean, your clinician as well, taking care of everyone else. And at the end of the day, you know, um, I just, I'm a part of an anthology and um, my chapter is about my journey. And just writing made me remember some things. And it was hard to write because the more I wrote, the more I cried, you know? And it's about transparency now. And so we have to become transparent in, in, in this, this, this journey of becoming transparent, you will awaken something within yourself that you thought died. Mm -hmm. You will begin to recall some emotions that you thought you lost. And so for all of the women that's hearing and watching, and the men too, although this is mothers and daughters, I've come to know that there are men that are in domestic violence relationships. Men can be just as neglected. And so I'm not going to put a gender on, on, on emotions and feelings, but just to say, learn how to love ourselves. And when people can't love you, guess what? It's okay. It really is okay. Because uh, here, here's something that we have to have a part of shift in as well. We will attract, do I, do I need to say more? We will attract, it's like we have this, this sign on our back that says, I'm a victim, I love being a victim, you know. Oh no, no, that, I tore that sign up. I'm not a victim, okay? I will never be a victim. And then you have to be mindful that some people cannot handle the fact that you under that you know who you are, and what women do is we downplay ourselves so that we can fit. Oh man, I did that a lot, like in so many places, and that was a huge part of my rebranding to no longer do that to myself. And I will be honest with you, even as far as being visible, because of so much stuff happening to me, even though I've been a beauty queen, done all of that out there, I. I purpose in my mind, I would not even, I t I've turned down so many opportunities to speak like I am tonight because I didn't want to come on video other than making myself do it for business. I did not want to do that. And so that was a part of my rebranding. And I made a promise that I'm going to stop doing that. I'm going to stop. And, and we do that a lot. And that's what really holds us back. So a part of your rebranding is allowing yourself to be who who God called you to be, who you innately 
who you are, that positive part to do it and don't run away from who she is. Even if you have to get someone to help you to, to begin to find those areas and work on those areas as you rebrand your life um, in whatever area you needed to rebrand your life in. And normally when you do that, you'll find it in every area of your life. You will find yourself doing that. Like you say, looking at things that you thought weren't there and it's still, it's still there. Right. Absolutely. So it doesn't all happen at one time as you rebrand. It's, it's, you evolve over a period of time. So, and, um, oh, this is a great conversation. I, I, there's so much more um, to discuss. And I, I pray that um, someone that's watching or, or listening, that something was said tonight, one, to encourage you, um, secondly, to remind you that you are worth it. And yes. for every daughter, um, no matter what you've seen in the life of your mother, that you have to make healthy decisions for yourselves um, and learn what's healthy, what, what is a healthy relationship. And, you know, um, we also have to learn that you made mention of um, not wanting to get on the camera. I am not a camera person. My family is always um, at me because I run from the cameras. And then I got a grandson and I said, I have no pictures of me for my grandson because I don't like pictures. And, but the, the thought behind that, and I'm, I'm gonna do a little self-disclosure, the self behind that, the questions was, what do I look like? Mm. You know, am I skinny enough? Am I pretty enough? Um, is my diction, you know, clear enough? You go through all this self, value assessments and you know what when you become comfortable with yourself guess what i'm on camera right <laughs> you know, i am on camera right. and though who's gonna see this where is this gonna go gonna it's go. gonna be negative what if, yeah so yeah what if i don't you know i mean i'm from south carolina you know so what if if if, if my 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 southern uh speech come guess what I have learned to be my authentic self. And for those on Facebook and those that are on, the, on Zoom, this is who I am and I love me today. I have a sign that says, yeah, I, I have a sign. No, I will not ever allow anyone again to disturb my peace. Yes. Not. I do what I do today because I love living. I do what I do. Look, my daughter is upset with me right now, and that's okay. I hope she's listening. <laughs> this is mothers and daughters. <laughs> Look, I'm not perfect. I'm not perfect. But I love my child. And if I have to learn how to not be so protective, not shifting, but how not to be so protective, because they don't always want your input, you know. And um, I, I had a little sassy saying today that I was going to tell my daughter, I was going to say, you know what, I can always get another daughter, but you can never get another mother. Now, you know, that was, that has nothing to do. <laughs> For anyone that knows my daughter and I, we are very candid. We are, you know, and so um, what, oh, I love her. I, I, she is, you know, everything to me. And, um, but my, my, my mother-daughter relationship is no different than anyone else's, you know, and um, sometimes they listen, and sometimes, sometimes they, don't. they don't. Sometimes you need to say something and sometimes you don't. And knowing the balance yes. is, is an ever learning process. Yes. And so I'm going to say publicly to my daughter, I am so sorry oh. that I love you. And um, so get through this honeymoon so you can come back and work through Facebook and all these other things. <laughs> Your mother has learned. <laughs> but uh, we are at the end of, uh, of, of our uh, show tonight. I want to thank all of those again that are uh, that's still with us. And um, we are here every Thursday. It, this is Mothers and Daughters Candid Conversation. And it is just that no script, 
just a conversation. Um, and it is a, it, this has been a learning process for me. I am so out of my zone that it is wonderful. Um, and so Darlene, I'm going to give you closing words. So thank you so much. Um, two things, one, two things came to mind. Uh, one, I remember when you, when you were saying, um, talking to, you know, the women, how do they, one of the things that God said to me was, are you scared enough? To, are you scared enough to stay? Or are you scared enough to go? Mm-hmm. I said, go. He said, well, keep packing. Yeah. So sometimes we have to do that. And I, I just want to say too, I mean, I love my, I love my mother. Uh, I hate that right now. She, I mean, some days she, most days she would not even know who I am, but um, God showed me little glimpses that it has been repaired because she actually remembers me at times and acts for me um, when she's sitting there. And, and there was one time I called, she actually recognized me as well as my daughter. And so I just, I just appreciate we may think we we may may think that it's all bad, but it's not all bad. There is some good that our mothers taught us. If if they were there, there's something we learned from her. There's some part of you that's a good thing that kept you surviving. Like for me, that kept me kept me pushing. Um, the things that she did, thought she was doing against me. What she doesn't understand is what she taught me is what kept me. Oh, um, that. would kept me and helped me to overcome what she was trying to do to me because that's what she taught me. And so, I, I mean, even all the stuff with business and all, I learned that from my mother. I learned um, if somebody tells you no, you're just talking to the wrong person. If there's a will, there's a way. So I just want to say, I really appreciate my mother for um, for who she is. And um, I, I, just, I just thank God that she was there when she was there. Uh, and hey, all the ladies, I want to tell you, go rebrand your life. Whatever part of your life you're in, reclaim. Yes. Reclaim who you are, that woman that you know you want to be. That woman that's been screaming to come out of you. Yeah. Let her come out. Yes, yes. Um, someone made a, a comment, Sandra Bryant. <laughs> she always has something so profound. She says, I was a volunteer victim. Wow. Yeah, yeah. That's Which- deep. That's deep, yes. Um, I'm so sorry I didn't see that earlier because I really would have um, wow. talked about that. Yes, yes. Um, so, again, I want to thank you. Um, I do plan to have you back. Thank you. I, <laughs> thank you for having me tonight. This was this was good. This is my first time I really talk about it. And then, you know, sometimes you're like, I don't want to always talk about the bad stuff, but guess what? That's what helps other people to get over. I know that I'm beyond that. And now I can talk about it in a positive way um, to show women that you don't have to stay where you were, that you, you can get beyond it. That is the purpose of this candid conversation, because we have learned to endure so much and someone my prayer is that someone listening will be encouraged, will know that, oh, it's not just me. I'm not the only one that have, you know, had this experience. And if she can do it, I can do it. My faith says that God has no respect to person. Mm. And um, I'm, 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 I probably won't become the scientist <laughs> that I always wanted to be. <laughs> not, not too late. It's not too late. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> but um, there is, it is all, it is never too late to be who you are. You know, to live to discover something new about yourself every day. Yes. And and something that um, hearing your story, I want to close on this: that the 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 that God, the spirit of reconciliation, is alive. And so we have to reconcile with ourselves before we can reconcile with With anyone anyone else. And so I heard you make mention of um, your your baby's father. So obviously you may not still be married, um, but there has to be some communication. Some communication. communication. (laughs) Getting a little bit. It's getting a little. We've learned. I've learned when to talk to him. 
I've okay. learned when to have conversation without, without, um, yeah, without other, you know, just to us. Talk. To have a conversation is so yeah. important and it's good for your children. And so yes. reconciling <clears throat> um, uh, is important because if you don't, have a spirit of forgiveness and if you don't if you're not able to reconcile then then you you allow yourself to be held hostage yes and you can't your you, your life is then stagnant but when you are able to release forgive and for good it's not always forgiving the other person you have to forgive yourself Self. and when you're able to do that then you can move forth in yes. the divine purpose because we all have one. And so here it is nine. Oh my God, we are past our time. <laughs> you try to make it an hour so that um, our audience will come back. The conversation was very rich. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, again, your, your professional resume is, is dynamic. Congratulations on all of your achievements. Thank you. Um, <laughs> and um, thank you to the audience again. And um, this is a, a, a conversation for healing and helping through shared experiences. And so I invite you um, to con continue to share with us on Thursdays, Mothers and Daughters Candid Conversations. And um, I have... Um, on Amazon, this is a, a very, very short um, devotional, Mothers and Daughters Candid Conversations with God that I penned, and I, I pray that it will be a, uh, a help in a mother or a daughter's life. There's, there's, there are exercises for mothers and daughters to do to help their relationship, to reconcile their relationship so that daughters don't grow up with the, I wish I could have told my mother that when I was, you know how we had those things that we wish we could have said. Yes. Well, this is just some exercises to help us so that we can break the cycles and some things. I'm going to get that for my daughters. We've oh. been talking about what are we going to do, especially with us still having, um, just watch, you know, doing church online. We talked about taking a, an evening and just us doing a devotion or some, so I'm definitely going to get that for us. We've been looking. Thank you. It will, I know um, that it will help because it helped me and it is, um, it's, it's not very long, but the exercises are very powerful. And so please thank you and, and share that. And um, in command is also, um, we'll go on my site. And, and, and I, I hope that my chapter will bless someone. Um, and it is after nine. I could talk more, but I refuse to. Thank you so much. <laughs> I thought she said an hour. <laughs> thank you, thank you again. All, to all my Facebook um, viewers, thank you. We love you. Uh, Linda Wilson, I will talk with you soon. Thank you, this was very good. Um, inventory on yourself. Thank you, uh, Sister Brian. Um, and to all of the other watchers, thank you so much. To my niece, Sheree, who is engaged. Um, I love you. And um, all that I do is for, I have one daughter, but I have three nieces. That's all oh my, um, if, if I can do anything, to, to make sure that their life is smoother than their aunties was, then, then my, my life and my living has not been in, in vain. So thank you again. Thank you, Mary, Aunt Mary Jackson. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mabel. The Sharon. I see Mabel commented too. Uh, see, I have to put my glasses on to see. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Mabel. Um, thanks for all of the comments. I was trying not to, I was trying to be cute and not put my glasses on. <laughs> but I can't see without you see without mine. I got my I got mine here, but I can see without them. <laughs> so thank you. Someone said that they enjoyed it. Maxine, please, on um, March 25th, I my guest will be none other than the Maxine Worcester and her daughter Claudia. And I am looking oh, forward. So to the conversation. So um, to all of those, you know Maxine, 
Join us on November 25th. This month is also, not only is it, uh, are we celebrating women, but it's also um, a month to celebrate social workers. And so next week, I'm inviting all of the social workers that's on this line to join us. Um, we will have a great time. We will not discuss our prior work, but I do have something in store for all of the social workers to be awesome. celebrated on Mothers and Daughters Candid Conversation. So until next week, I love you. Good night. God bless you. And learn and continue to be your authentic self. Good night. God bless you. Good night, you. everybody. Thank you for hanging out with us. Thank you. Good night. Thank you, Gloria. Good night. Thank Good night. you. Good night. Good night.